All right, everyone, uh, real quickly, we're going to pick back up with item number 20. If you don't mind uh, carrying on with your conversations out in the lobby area, that would be very helpful at this time. Our next two speakers are Amber Newman, followed by An Arlene Hammerschmidt. Perfect timing. Okay. So, um, Amber Newman, I really had nothing prepared. I um, wasn't planning on speaking on this, but I got to tell you, I think is exampled by pretty much everybody here and everybody that was here at the last meeting. This hotel is a bad idea. Okay, it's, it could be a fine project. It's a bad place. It's a two-horse, two-star hotel right off the freeway, right into one of the major gateways of our city, onto our namesake street. And based on the aesthetic design that they showed, it looks like a prison. Okay, um, on top of that, the um, environmental hazards of adding this extra light. We've already got a stoplight at, at both on-ramp and off-ramp of the five, another one at Vine, another one at Ditmar, you want to put another one in the middle of the hill, all of those cars are going to have to stop and it's going to create a backlog. You know the traffic on Oceanside Boulevard, all of that idling, all of the noise, it's all going to be filtered right into Cavalier Mobile Home Park because that's the only direction it has to go. Um, on top of that, the light, uh, okay, also the U-turn at Ditmar, Horrible idea. Residential on the east side of the intersection, a school for the deaf on the west side of the intersection. I don't know where you think people are going to turn around. Um, the light component, the light in front of the hotel, a new component that was not included in the original notice. So I definitely think that that should be deferred so that the public can properly review and comment on that specific element. Um, and yeah, other than that, I got to tell you, I think. Uh, the citizens speak, and I think you should just pretty much say no. Thank you. Is Arlene Hammerschmidt still here? Arlene? Okay, we'll move on to our next speakers. Our next speaker is uh, Leticia Pepper, followed by Carolyn Kramer. Uh, good evening. Um, I hope that the project proponent is here with the, his, his or her attorney. Um, I'm an attorney, and I've been one since 1982, and I was a community activist in the city of Riverside. And more than once, um, we went through the whole process of hearings and things, and we ended up having to sue our city and whichever person was developing a project that had not complied with CEQA. And I would say it's my opinion that this project is in violation of CEQA for a number of reasons, without going into the details of what might be wrong with things. The, the thing is, CEQA was designed to let everything out in the open so the public can see it all there and make comments, and then the city council votes on it with everybody on the same page and knowing the same information, that's what you need. And the way the stoplight was added at the end violates CEQA, in my opinion. So um, if, you, if the city council wants to approve this, it's the developer, my understanding should be the developer, who ends up paying the attorney's fees when the developer and the city get sued. So it's kind of up to the developer. Do you want to back out now and try and fix it, or you want to go forward and see what happens? Uh, I already bought my money to contribute towards a sequel lawsuit, because I think it's a good one. Thank you. Good evening, Mayor, Council Members, Carolyn Kramer, Oceanside resident for 30 years. I'm here to speak with the rest of my neighbors and ask you to deny the zone amendment. This project does not fit in this neighborhood. And contrary to what Ms. Gunther said last week, this does affect our neighborhood. It affects my neighborhood, my neighbor's neighborhood, Fire Mountain neighborhood, Loma Alta neighborhood, and every person that actually uses Oceanside Boulevard. It doesn't fit. The developer bought a pig and a poke. He's delinquent in his taxes for 2017-18, and now he's asking you to bail out his bacon. You are setting a horrible precedent in the city by making all these zone changes. You've heard it time and time again. This project 
is the prime example of why SOAR was initiated to begin with. Because we can't trust you, and we can't trust you to defend our quality of life. So I stand here tonight and ask you to deny the zone change. And I challenge you, at least one of you, to join Councilmember Sanchez and Councilmember Lori and vote this project down. It is a no, no, no quality of life for our residents. Get on board. Our next two speakers are Nadine Scott and Sheila Keda. Nadine Scott, Friends of Loma Alta Creek. Good evening again. Anyone with a modicum of common sense would know this is ugly. It doesn't fit there. It's immediately adjacent to single family home property lines. It's too dense. It's too intense. It looks like a prison. It's four stories on certain aspects. If you look at this, where I put the arrows, those are all four story markers. So many mistakes were made at the last hearing and with the studies and what you presented and what you didn't present and what you weren't able to study and what the public wasn't able to study. Have any of you been up to Schaefer Street or Eucalyptus or Cavalier? I went by Cavalier today. This is gonna ruin the quality of life for hundreds and hundreds of people. The construction noise alone will terminate the quality of life of all the people that are within about 2,000 feet or, or better Kern, you're never going to change your mind. You're a lost cause. But Jack, you have a heart for people. You added that signal at the last moment after your city staff said it was not warranted. And if you believe that in your heart, I don't know who pressured them or why they went in the back room or why they started measuring. They're both qualified gentlemen. There can't be a signal there. It's just too dangerous. And Peter, what's your excuse? You got appointed to help represent your constituents, your voters, your residents. You're still planning. You're still promoting projects without looking at the material facts. It's really shameful. You've already got five or $10 million out of our city. Please put on a different hat and start caring about us, your neighbors, your taxpayers, your residents. Let's hear it from the neighbors. No zone change. No zone change. Thank you. Sheila Keda, 1092 Greenway Road. Um, all of you are elected officials, and as Kern said earlier tonight, that your primary job is to carry out the will of the people. The will of the people is to not rezone and to not approve this hotel. Do your job. Do not support the developers, support the people. We do not want this hotel. Our next two speakers are Cindy Rocco, followed by Lisa Hamilton. And then Arlene Hammerschmidt will actually go after Lisa Hamilton. I saw Arlene came back in the room, if I'm not mistaken. Honorable Council, Mayor, Cindy Rocco. Um, there's obvious reason, objective reasons to deny this project from um, zone amendments, I mean zone and general plan adherence, and CEQA EIR requirements. We're noticing a trend, a growing trend of zoning in general, plan amendments, CUPs, waivers, and concessions. It's just not fair. To assess a project, traffic delay and safety are key environmental impacts. Changes in traffic light configurations and traffic lights will directly impact drivers, pedestrians, and bikers. According to CEQA, if a project may cause adverse environmental impacts, an EIR must be prepared via in-depth studies and a complete analysis of the alternatives. No signal light scenarios were studied. 
I want to appeal to Council Member Feller to please, please, please represent us today. As you probably noticed, residents are dramatically increasing public engagement. People are becoming outraged. This hotel impacts, directly impacts your district, but other districts as well. It's dangerous, it's unsafe. There's the canyonization, massing, bulk. Um, it's cheap, it's uh, the people there in South O, Fire Mountain, and Seaside, and that Loma Alta are all gonna be impacted. This is all about the balance of the quality of life and safety of your people. So, Council Member Feller, please listen to the people and vote now. Thank you. Good evening, Mayor and Council Members. I'm Lisa Hamilton, 323 South Detmire and Oceanside. I feel like I've been hearing about this development of a hotel on this site forever. It's actually only been since 2005. My neighbors and I have been concerned about the many problems on this site, and we've heard about them over and over again. I don't think I've ever seen a project where there were no neighbors, whatever, supporting it, and this is the one. But I will emphasize here the problems of traffic on Oceanside Boulevards and neighborhood streets. Ingress and egress has always been a cause for concern, and it's almost impossible to make a U-turn at Ditmar quickly unless you have a very small car. I tried it, I can't do it in my Tacoma truck in one smooth motion. There's almost no room for a roundabout and practically no room to expand that intersection with sidewalks and curbs on each side. It's possible that if the lights at, uh, o at Ditmar, Oceanside Boulevard, and the hotel could be synchronized so that traffic couldn't run quickly through the Ditmar light fast downhill and come to a screeching halt or maybe a wreck at the hotel light. That, that light, the demand light would work. But I don't know whether the city has the um, ability to synchronize or to do modeling so that we will know whether those lights could be synchronized. If the lights could be synchronized, it would solve a lot of problems. Thank you. Good evening, Mayor. Good evening, Mayor and Council Members. Arlene Hammerschmidt on Ivy Road in Fire Mountain of Oceanside. I am concerned for the liability responsibility of the city of Oceanside following the first traffic death of these signals. It's an inevitability in my opinion, and that's only my opinion, I'm, the fact is, however, that we don't have a study on this new setup. We don't have a prediction. We don't have an expert weighing in. It's not a part of staff report. And I, and neither am I a lawyer, but I've been reading a heck of a lot of law lately. That seems like a big, big liability to me. I would avoid that if I was in your seat. Thank you very much. Good night. Our next two speakers are Donna Geierman, followed by Michael Odegaard. Good evening, Mayor Weiss, Council Members. My name is Donna Geierman. I live on the 1200 block of South Nevada. That is the cul-de-sac right at the blind curve at the top of the hill. I am also the one that had the accident at that intersection in 2015 when your staff showed no accidents. I'm concerned, This we know this stretch of road is dangerous already. We have numerous housing developments going in. Downtown is getting filled up with breweries and bars and restaurants that serve alcohol. People are gonna be traveling that road going to them enjoy themselves downtown and drinking, or they're gonna be bringing their families to the beach, and we know a car full of kids can be distracting. On a dangerous 
part of the road now, and now we're looking at putting in this hotel? This is nuts. Please listen to us. Please listen to the property taxpayers here. The owner of this property, someone already mentioned that they were, didn't pay this year's property taxes. They are also in default for 2015 and 16. That's $40,000 it's owed. Yet they're asking for all this, and the people that pay property taxes that live here, that love this town, are being treated like this. Thank you. Oh, I can't. It only goes landscape, unfortunately. Oh. Sorry. Honorable Mayor and Council Members, uh, my name is Michael Odegaard. I uh, am affiliated with Vine Street Apartments, which has served our neighborhood. Actually, the first solar-powered apartment community in Oceanside. Uh, we've served Oceanside with affordable housing for 23 years now. <clears throat> um, but I want to speak to you as a community designer. Because when I heard that there's a 17-foot retaining wall, it's, that's like freeway scale, right? It's, it's a tragedy for designers. Um, the reason is because money that's being spent on that really should be spent on architecture. And it, we don't know how it's going to hold up in seismic situations. And so from a, from a design standpoint, I think it's a mistake. Now, I want to talk about this diagram I, I have here. I understand that there, it, there might be this idea that you're going to change the recreational commercial zone from what was our play field to now this site. But I think that there was some misrepresentation of what that actual zone was called. It was actually called recreation commercial, which means to provide recreation opportunities to residential and commercial zones, okay? By making your zone change in 2016, you took that away from a neighborhood that had a high need for it, okay? And you're gonna say now that's gonna serve the recreational needs of our neighborhood? We need our recreational opp opportunities. It's not too late to save a play field for our neighborhood. And this is not going to make up for it. I urge you to please do not make this zone change. Our next two speakers are Jimmy Knott, followed by Monique Combs. Mayor, council members, Jimmy Knott, 127 Cherry Lane. As you know, I deal in facts. This is a fact, and it will take in effect some learning opportunities for our students and students worldwide. There's a chapter there titled Miocene Field Trip, Rock Collecting in Oceanside. I'll just go down through it. And then this project proposes to do away with a huge chunk of this historic site and does not preserve any of it, nor has this council directed any preservation. What kinds, I'll quote from the article, what kinds of strange rocks exist here that led to this unusual tectonic hypothesis involved to explain them? The rocks here are, quote, unusual and unlike any other rocks we see in San Diego. You're proposing to do away with that unusuality and that uniqueness. 
During the Miocene era, 14 to 17 million years ago in San Diego, there were hills and mountains to the west. Sediment was washed east to the continent. This is an unusual topography and it involves unusual rocks. You're going to take and destroy history and culture and dynamics. Save it. Good evening, Mayor and City Council members. My name is Monique Combs, and I'm an Oceanside resident and local teacher. I'd like to voice my opposition to the Fairfield Inn project. I'm concerned with the city's willingness to rezone residential areas. I don't think we should be selling off our beautiful, quaint neighborhoods to developers. I'm even more concerned with the increased traffic this project will bring. I'm sure that you're aware that Ditmar School is about two blocks from this site. We serve students with moderate to severe, severe disabilities in a community-based program. This means that we work with young adults with autism, visual impairments, who are deaf and hard of hearing, and have intellectual disabilities, in, and the community is our classroom. I cannot tell you how many times we have almost been hit, even walking in the large groups that we work in, especially on Oceanside Boulevard, on PCH, and even on Dipmar. Next year, we're set to have almost 60 students at this site. Opening a 99-room hotel will not only put these Oceanside Unified students at great risk, but also all of the current residents. I believe there are already two new developments already going in, and the thought of another hotel one block from the hotel already on the corner of the five at Oceanside Boulevard is overwhelming. The citizens of Oceanside would be much better served by designating this land for some type of public use rather than rezoning this residential area. Thank you so much for your time and consideration. Our next two speakers, <laughs> next two speakers are Miles McGinnis and Kevin Bachman. Councilman and Mayor, thank you for your time tonight. Um, speaking is painful for me. It's one of my biggest fears in life, so here I am. Anyways, um, I've come and spoke on this numerous times. I've written you, and I only heard back from Chuck. And it's a simple word thing that you do, and it says automatic reply that you've received my email. Didn't get it back from anyone. Very disappointing. I'm confused, angry, and appalled that our councilmen aren't listening to their city planners. Seven of eight of the city planners said, no. How do you guys know more? Or what do you know more? 99 rooms instead of seven or eight homes? Mm, increased traffic, I think. A vacant lot along the, um, Oceanside Boulevard? Why? Because it's a bad idea, a bad location, with limited access, and will represent another eyesore for the gateway of Oceanside. It's our name of our street, people. Come on. When you drive down the five, what do you see? What do you see? What are the biggest signs? You can come gamble here. You can come see our hotels. There's no, no gateway. This is an opportunity to do something great that you see from the five, not a penitenti penitentiary. Um, and what's most disappointing is that you sit through all these meetings the city planners listen, they know what they're doing, and I hear from them directly that you guys have already made up your mind before there's a vote, before you've even listened to your constituents. So, I'd like to truly start thinking about the development of Oceanside besides more hotels. How many more hotels do we need? We need another one? We're short on hotels now. And start thinking about what's best for the community. I hope this vote reflects your outlook. Thank you. Uh, good evening, this is, uh, Kevin Bachman. Um, uh, hello, City Council members. This is a contentious issue. The bottom line is this contention is between the developer and three of you guys, three City Council members, including the mayor. 
against, on the other side, two council members and the rest of the community, the entire rest of the community. You have heard from the community. Now, um, when the public uh, comment session is closed, we'd like to hear your clear reasons why you are voting for this project. We'd like to hear that. What reasons do you have that you want to vote for this? Specifically, why? I mean, I know there's money. We always want money. That's not a reason necessarily to put something bad in this neighborhood against all of these people in the community. This is not smart growth. This is not responsible. This is lining the pocket of a greedy developer who is able to twist three of you around his finger. Please overturn this previous vote and explain clearly why you are voting against the residents and the community you represent. Thank you. No further public on this item. Deputy Mayor Lowry. Uh, thank you, Mayor. So 300 pages. I just want to make a very brief statement. I want to thank the community for coming in and doing their part to make sure that we, the council, are paying attention to what you're doing. I want to point out this item that was brought up a couple hours ago about transparency. All the stuff we're talking about here is all about transparency. This is not a hidden agenda item. And I, I, you know, I know I'm not being blamed for taking money from developers, but it's, that's part of what's out there in the public domain. It can all be found very easily if that's something you want to know about. It's not being hidden. Anyway, I'm still opposed to this project, even with the new light and at the, in the middle of the hill where people will be going 50 miles an hour and someone may be stopped or someone might be walking across the street. That's a real issue. I, at the last meeting, I uh, made a motion and I couldn't get a second. I want to give my constituents one last chance to stop the hotel, so I am going to make a motion to deny the rezone of this property and I need a second to take it to a vote. Councilmember Sanchez. Thank you. It is very, very rare that we should ever change our general plan. People make a lot of investments based upon the general plan. And especially in this area, there has never been a hint that we would be just doing something um, like this at all until this project came forward. I have. I've spoken to a lot of folks, um, definitely received all the emails. Thank you very much for coming again today um, to state your positions. And, you know, it just doesn't make sense to me. It doesn't. And um, I did get a chance to speak to one of the council members um, who uh, voted in favor of this project, hoping that we could have a different um, vote today. Um, because to me, it is, it is highly critical that if we aren't going to ever change, you know, a general plan, that it be done with the support and partnership of the community. That it be something that somehow there is some kind of public amenity that we're getting out of something. And the only public amenity that, that is being pointed out to us is a sidewalk. A sidewalk that is near impossible to use because it's going up and down and will be very extremely difficult for most people. I have, over the years, asked for stoplights, but mostly stop signs, and was told over and over again, if it is not warranted, staff will not recommend it. And that changed here on the dais. That has never, in the time that I've been on the council, that has never happened. And I am really concerned that we're not following protocol. That was the one thing uh, that one reason, the only reason that Council Member Feller decided to vote in support of this project was a light, a light that was basically denied by staff because it doesn't follow state law. I am very, very concerned that there are a lot of issues that were not really addressed either by the EIR or the things that came up afterwards. I am very concerned about a, a, a very unsafe situation with respect to a U-turn that can't possibly work and in a private light. We, sh we ought to be going back and revisiting 
our Oceanside Boulevard vision. We looked at that. There was a, a very specific vision on behalf of developer, and then when he got out, then we all had to get out. Unfortunately, unfortunately, we have not visited, revisited that for, I would say, at least 10 years, probably longer. It is time. It is time that we bring that up, that we re revisit our Oceanside Boulevard vision plan, that we put, invest in this. This is our namesake. This area, right off the freeway, you can, it's, it's, it's a site. It, we, are, we deserve better. As a community, we deserve better. So I am asking my fellow council members here to please reconsider that this is something that, you know, the, the only thing is, is and I'm, I don't want to say it's, it's um, say it's not important, the, the TOT, but it just doesn't fit. It doesn't fit our community. And we have representative government. We ought to be listening to the community. So I would be asking our one of the three to please change their minds, or it would be great if all three did, right? <laughs> but um, to please reconsider, and I will second that motion. I have a question for staff. Um, there was a issue that was raised regarding the signal and the study and lack of study and compliance with CEQA. Does someone want to address that? Mayor Weiss, members of the City Council, um, the, the issue of the traffic signal and with regards to CEQA has come up and we, we have examined that. Um, so there was a traffic uh, a focused uh, access analysis prepared for the hotel. It was draft form. Uh, staff had anticipated uh, questions about the traffic signal coming up at the City Council hearing. Um, city traffic engineer reviewed that uh, focused uh, access analysis and found that there's no impact associated with it. The traffic signal is not a mitigation measure, it's a project feature. Uh, the, the study showed no new impacts and therefore with regard to CEQA we're in compliance. There's no, no recirculation required as a result of that study. Are you an attorney? Thank you. Um, the other question I have is there were comments made in regards to the Planning Commission. If I recall in the report that staff prepared for the council, the issues that were raised by the Planning Commission were comprehensively addressed by staff. Mayor Weiss, that's correct. In our report and presentation to the City Council on May 9th, we comprehensively addressed the concerns raised by the Planning Commission, including traffic safety, uh, issues of compatibility, issues of project benefits, uh, issues of noise. Um, so yes, we have addressed and, those concerns. And staff's recommendation was that the council overturn the Planning Commission's decision? That's correct, Mayor Weiss. Okay, thank you. Uh, Deputy Mayor Lowry. Council Member Feller. Thank you. Um, the signal that that I brought up was the uh, activated simply from coming out of the, the the project, and you know, frankly, I don't see any need for a crosswalk anywhere there uh, in that area. And and I believe that our uh, system, our traffic management system. Uh, can signal, you can synchronize lights to just about any way that you need to along that corridor. Is that correct? I'd like to defer that question to the city's traffic engineer who's here in the audience. Honorable. Honorable Mayor and members of the council, David DePiro, City Traffic Engineer. Um, we, the way that we foresee this signal to work would be it would rest in green for Oceanside Boulevard unless there was um, a vehicle detected coming out of the driveway or making a left in um, coming off of Oceanside Boulevard east to northbound into the driveway. 
Um, we haven't gotten to the full design yet. Uh, we will once the project's underway as far as the signal goes. Um, so right now, again, the way that the des we design signals, we use, um, you know, we take all aspects into account, not only automobiles, but pedestrians too. So it's tough for me to say right now that we can eliminate uh, the pedestrian call from that signal at this point, just direct people down to Vine Street. I'm, I'm not at willing to say that at this point right now. We'll have to look at it through the design of the signal, but still a signal can go in with that in place. And, and you can synchronize. We can synchronize the signals. Um, Caltrans uh, signals at the ramps uh, dictate how the traffic flows through there, so we would have to at least coordinate the signals within our realm. Thank you. We, we have a motion and a second. Uh, please vote. Yeah, it's a motion to deny. The yeah, the motion is actually to deny. That's been seconded, so I will not need to title that. Yeah. You can proceed with the vote. Uh, so a, a yes vote means we want to deny the project. You want a yes vote means you want to deny the rezone. Motion fails. Th uh, two, three. Count Councilmember <laughs> Kern. No, 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 no. Uh, no. Um, <laughs> Councilmember Kern, Weiss, and Feller, no for that motion. Councilmember Kern. Move adoption. Thank you. We have a motion and a second. Now I need to title. Please. This is the introduction of an ordinance of the city of Oceanside amending the zoning designation for certain real property located on the north side of Oceanside Boulevard between Vine Street and Clementine Street, APN 1523037, from single family residential RS to recreational commercial CR, fair filled in and suites, Oceanside Boulevard zone amendment, ZA 15000009. So this is a, a, a no vote if we don't want the project. Okay, thank you. Don't Please want vote. Change, yeah. Motion approved. Three two. Sanchez Lowry. No. Okay. There are no. There are no mayor council member items. Are there any general council member comments? Council member Sanchez. Yes, I, I I do want to say a couple of things. Just a couple, and they are um, a little personal. I want to congratulate my nephew, David Sanchez, for graduating from Miracosta this Friday. I'm so proud of my, my nephew, David, and that he's going to Cal State San Francisco. So congratulations, David. And on a more somber note, I wanted to, um, to make note that we lost uh, a great person recently, Clara Fusat Guy the sister of Louise Fassat. So she, she just passed away uh, about a week and a half ago. So just wanted to, to say that the Fassat uh, family uh, meant a lot to Oceanside. And uh, she's already, you know, an angel, I'm sure, um, up there. Thank you. So we'll stand adjourned until 3.30 Wednesday, June 6th. <laughs>